Hey, Steve Noble, Noble Moto. Uh, I just picked up a 2022 Lowrider ST. I mean, this is borrowed. I bought this thing. This is coming, coming from the guy who always said, like, I never buy a new Harley. I just modified over one. Buh, 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 buh. So I test rode this thing. First, there were the reviews online came out. They were really amazing. It was really impressive. It's really technically the bike I want. Sport bike suspension, you know, cruiser styling, you kind of FXR styling, park bags, a little fairing for some wind protection, a whole lot of horsepower and torque. Man, this thing sounds amazing to me. So I test rode it, I was sold. And um, this is coming, I have ridden Euro Sport Bikes, Sport Tours, GSXR, Speed Triples, Ducati Monsters, Fuel 1125Rs, a lot of amazing bikes out there I have ridden in my life, owned and ridden. And I'm telling you, this thing is amazing. It's like Harley hired engineers from BMW or something. They really knocked out of the park with this thing. I'm not getting any discounts from BMW from Harley here. I had to pay full price for this thing. Uh, so like this is the God's honest cruise. This thing is amazing. I put about 500 miles on it so far. Rode the ever living piss out of it because that's how I believe in break in bikes. It is amazing. The engine, uh, it's a 117 uh, Milwaukee 8, six speed. Uh, I have a built Dyna. You know, it's 88 to 95 inch. I did cams, minor head work, big bore, high compression kit, draft gear ratio, ignition modules, two in one super trap, the whole nine yards. This thing is just as fast, bone stock with the air compressor sounding exhaust on it. Like, it, it's the, the motor and drivetrain is amazing. The gear ratio is outstanding on this thing. Uh, the brakes on this thing, they're like sport bike brakes. It's back to like one finger, like I'm riding a GSXR, one finger grabby front brakes. Uh, it's got ABS. I don't know if I've tripped off the ABS yet. Uh, I end up taking it down a gravel road because that's what happens in rural Ohio when you hit the curves sometimes. And it was down this steep downhill kind of two lane goat path type thing. I was dragging the rear brake. It didn't lock up, which, you know, would have been acceptable, but it was still kind of just grabby and doing as it did. So I believe that was the ABS. Uh, I didn't get the pedal feedback like you do in a car. Uh, so if that was the ABS, it works amazing. Really impressed with it. Uh, yeah, the gauge dashboard does all the stuff. Uh, it's got range till empty, which is really cool. Fuel gauge, first working fuel gauge I've ever owned. Uh, it's got cruise control, and let me tell you, if you've never ridden cruise control on a motorcycle, any brand, it's like a religious experience. This is legit cruise control, not like the throttle lock thing or anything like that where it just holds the throttle in place. You set it for a speed, it maintains that speed. Uphill, downhill, it's awesome. So, uh, one of my big concerns with it was the fairing on the thing. I was worried I was gonna get some weird buffing like you get on those bolt-on windshields and stuff that a lot of people have. Um, I ride with a full face helmet. Uh, this fairing, there's zero buffeting on it. No matter where I move at around on the thing, uh, it's nice and clean. Um, you open the visor, you get good wind coming in the helmet still, but cuts a nice clean hole in the wind. I will say though, I did notice with the visor open at like 70 or 80 miles an hour, um, unless I sit up like perfectly straight, there was a wee little bit of buffeting against the visor being open, but not with the visor closed. So that might actually be my helmet. I have an AGV K3 or K4, something like that. Um, so that might be the helmet because it doesn't do it with the visor closed. Um, my buddy rode it. He's about the same height, same helmet. He noticed it too. So it's not just in my head. Uh, but yeah, this thing, they really knocked out of the park with this thing. If you're on the fence, go buy one. You will not be impressed. Go test ride one if you can find one. Um, I, you know, was on a waiting list and they hooked me up out at, uh, Mad River Harley out near Sandusky. Uh, sales manager out there hooked me up. Um, I mean, I was on the waiting list, but, you know, he called me up as soon as the thing came in. I was next on the list and here it is. It's mine. Uh, yeah, bags. Really impressed with these bags. I guess you can't really see it from there, but got the nitrogen shocks on the bags. They're also quick release. They're locking. Seat, my only complaint probably really is the seat. Um, it has that gel seat feeling. If you're into that, you will like this. Uh, I'm into traveling, I like a firmer seat. Um, that way I can just put endless miles on it, or at least that's how I feel about seats. So I will be swapping out the seats. My one big gripe, uh, the front suspension could be better. Um, I heard it's a single rate spring. I don't know if that's true or not, but it is a little divey. It's a little mushy. Uh, probably some progressive springs. We'll clean that right up. Rear suspension, I haven't even screwed with it yet. It's really solid for Harley. Um, it may not be Aprilia, Ducati, Triumph suspension, but 
Prime Sport Bike suspension that is, not the stock stuff. Uh, but it is still a really good suspension right out of the box. Down the road, it might get an upgrade on it just because, hey, you can always have better suspension, especially if you're out ripping curves like I do. It doesn't scrape in turns. I mean, until you get it like way, way, way over, like you're hanging off the seat by that point. It's not one of the bikes that just scrapes at every in town turn you come to. Um, so, yeah, really top shelf product, man. Harley actually knocked out of the park with this thing. For once, they actually checked all the boxes. Um, and it's a reasonable price. Uh, I think MSRP is like 21 or something like that. I don't know. Then you know, there's fees and 